December 18th. Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible. Proverbs chapter 18 from the Old Testament. One who has isolated himself seeks his own desires. He rejects all sound judgment. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in disclosing what is on his mind. When a wicked person arrives, contempt shows up with him, and with shame comes reproach. The words of a person's mouth are like deep waters, and the fountain of wisdom is like a flowing brook. It is terrible to show partiality to the wicked by depriving a righteous man of justice. The lips of a fool enter into strife, and his mouth invites a flogging. The mouth of a fool is his ruin, and his lips are a snare for his life. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down into the person's innermost being. The one who is slack in his work is a brother to one who destroys. The name of the Lord is like a strong tower. The righteous person runs to it and is set safely on high. The wealth of a rich person is like a strong city, and it is like a high wall in his imagination. Before destruction, the heart of a person is proud but humility comes before honor. The one who gives an answer before he listens, that is his folly and his shame. A person's spirit sustains him through sickness, but who can bear a crushed spirit? The discerning person acquires knowledge and the wise person seeks knowledge. A person's gift makes room for him and leads him before important people. The first to state his case seems right until his opponent begins to cross-examine him. A toss of a coin ends disputes and settles the issue between strong opponents. A relative offended is harder to reach than a strong city and disputes are like the barred gates of a fortified citadel. From the fruit of a person's mouth his stomach is satisfied. With the product of his lips is he satisfied. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love its use will eat its fruit. The one who finds a wife finds what is enjoyable and receives a pleasurable gift from the Lord. A poor person makes supplications, but a rich man answers harshly. A person who has friends may be harmed by them, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. God that's me like right from the start verse one that's me one who isolated himself seeks his own desires he rejects all sound judgment i do realize this is the extreme part of it but i am an introvert most people who think that they know me wouldn't believe that they would think i'm an extrovert Um, but i truly love to be by myself i don't like to be with other people um I like peace and quiet. I like a sense of of order. I don't, I truly don't like to be the center of attention. Uh, But I can do all those things. I can be an extrovert. Uh, I love going out and talking to people about you, even walking up to people I don't know and talking to them about you. Um, I toured the country for years, um, speaking on stage to tens of thousands of people. So I can do the extrovert part only with you, but my natural preference is to be alone. And it's kind of a little bit interesting because part of having the disease I do, one of the symptoms that joyfully comes along with it is depression. And and we actually see a little bit of this in, in verse 14, where it says this person's spirit sustains him through sickness but who can bear a crushed spirit? So here's me who tends to like to be alone and every once in a while has to deal with crippling depression in my life that makes me want to become even more isolated from people. And you're like, no, that's not how it works. And and thankfully you've sent in amazing friends in my life who are like, yeah, that's not how this works, you know. We are a family, we take care of you and we understand your desire to be alone and we're going to honor and respect that, but we want you to know that we're here, we love you, and sometimes we're gonna come and drag you out of your house and take you to things, uh, which they thankfully do. But I I think being an introvert 
leads to wanting to not be around people and in doing so kind of goes against everything that you want us to do which is be part of a community part of church part of neighborhood groups part of small groups uh, to go out and disciple people so it becomes very difficult and I for a very long time at the church I'm at now which I love I, I refuse to go to neighborhood group now I had my reasons some were valid some weren't <laughs> but I had my reasons for not wanting to go and and now I'm in a neighborhood group and even though it's still uncomfortable to to be around people like that for three four hours every week I do know that it is helping me with my growth and my understanding um, of you and how you work and how you work in relationships and even though it's oddly foreign to me uh, to work on things like that. I do know that that's the area that you're continuing to push me in and and to help me grow and to, to show me what that looks like. And I already have down on my goals for next year to continue to work on that relationship part uh, because I really struggle with that. I, I love and care about people and they know that, but ideally I would like to tell them once a year and, and then be done, for, done with it. Uh, I'm not good on a day-to-day -day basis in a relationship. And here Proverbs says, I don't think you understand if you're not around other people you can find yourself in a lot of trouble um, and so part of that community also helps me with accountability of of realizing if I'm off track it's a great way to put a mirror up to my life and make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing uh, this morning we heard this great sermon from our pastor and he was talking about comparing your life to the glory of God comparing the things that you're holding on to the sin areas of your life and then comparing that to the glory of God and and watching how unimportant those things that you want to hold on to suddenly become in light of of your glory God so even though my personal desire would be to be by myself and and unfortunately when the the depression part comes on to be by myself even more I am truly thankful and blessed that you send people in my life into my life to help teach me that I can still keep parts of that, that uh, solitude piece, but to fully be who you made me to be, God. I need to be in a community setting. I need to be with other people who can hold me accountable. I need to be with other people who can teach me and guide me in your word. I need friends, just like the end of this chapter talks about friends uh, who are there with me through anything and everything uh, that I might go through. Uh, God, I am truly thankful for these amazing blessings uh, of people who put up with me when I'm a little bit odd and a little bit different than, than most people and how they interact with people. Uh, I appreciate that you sent people into my life who are willing to put up with my my uniqueness and oddness <laughs> of doing things and how I look at life. And I thank you also for building into all of this a sense of community that even though it's very awkward for me to be part of a family that you have given me an amazing family at the church I go to and and I just pray that everyone listening to this video God if they don't already have something like that surrounded by a couple people or a lot of people groups small groups big groups a church family God that you just point them in the right direction you just show them what it is that you want them to learn, how you want them to, to walk, and what you want for their future. God, I just thank you so much for everything that you do for us and how you teach us and guide us and round us out as the people that you created us to be. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.